We're following. The Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi is warning NATO of revenge attacks if it doesn't stop its air war against the regime. In her audio message relayed to thousands of supporters in Tripoli today, Gaddafi advised NATO to withdraw and run away. He said the Libyan military could be like locusts and bees in Europe, potentially targeting homes and offices. The Libyan leader still has many loyal followers, including a number of female fighters. CNN's David McKenzie has this report from Tripoli. Assembling a general purpose machine gun with an unusual accessory at hand. The women of the region have come to Ban Walid to prove their loyalty and to show off their weapons, which they're not afraid to use. These are people's sisters, grandmothers and mothers, but in Mama Gaddafi's Libya, they are a fighting force. From a young age, girls get military training in schools here. But with the war on, Libya's embattled leader has called for fresh volunteers. And women of all ages are signing up. Like 40-year-old textile worker Fatima Masoud. I train after work at four, she says. I go to train on using weapons. I like it and I like the training and defending my country. And now I'm training other women to use the guns. They learn to use this to defend Mwama and the country, their sergeant says. They train to use it, they assemble it and they take it apart, and they shoot and they get excellent scores. But many of these women are still unfamiliar with their rifles. The volunteers were bussed out by the government to meet us. It's tempting to dismiss them as a military force, but consider this. The nuns of the revolution, Gaddafi's famous female bodyguards. They're not just cosmetic. One reportedly took a bullet for him in Athens in 98. And since the 70s, women have trained in a special facility in Tripoli for combat. We met a female soldier at a graduation ceremony. She didn't want her name used. She's still fresh from the Eastern Front, a cannula still attached to her wrist. I forget my role as a woman. My role is now to fight, she tells me. She has four children and a husband fighting near Misrata. Do not underestimate any woman in Libya, whether old or young, she says. At any age, do not underestimate her. The women are still able to perform more than you think. The Libyan government claims they have handed out more than a million weapons to civilians since the beginning of the uprising. Raised to fight, could the loyalty of Libya's women prove a defining factor in the...
Arlington police may soon have the help of a watchful eye in the sky flying over their city. With terrorist attacks and everything else going on, I don't see it's a bad idea. Homeland Security grant dollars bought the city's first unmanned drone for the Super Bowl. And now the city of Arlington is the only U.S. city to have been granted a license from the FAA to fly an unmanned aircraft over an urban area. The idea is to provide an extra level of public safety for the city of Arlington. So any time that we can utilize progressive methods to increase our level of public safety, that's what we're doing and that's what we're looking at. Arlington Mayor Robert Klug said in a statement, I fully support using them. The police chief thinks they will be a huge advancement in public safety that will allow officers to view the entire city through aerial surveillance. The use of such drones has raised privacy concerns across the country. I think it's a good idea if you're going to keep the public safe. Uh, with big events, there's a lot of people around. Uh, I live near the stadium anyway, so making sure you know crime rate's down is always a good idea. But police say the drone could help them in traffic crash investigations and search and rescue missions. In front of you is the Leptron Avenger. Just 11 pounds and 20 inches long. These devices uh, are literally eyes in the sky uh, to us. Arlington Police Chief Theron Bowen says these unmanned aircraft are a powerful asset to the city. A situation uh, such as a major accident uh, with a chemical spill uh, that uh, may be hazardous for, for people to actually go into the area. We could request emergency authorization to fly the unmanned aircraft in to take a look. They're equipped with cameras that shoot still pictures and video, night vision equipment, and even heat sensing technology that will help the fire department. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Sunday, July 3rd, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two, part two of this news bulletin, everyone. Check out my website, ggnonline.com, that's www.ggnonline.com, or ddarko2012 on YouTube. Um, check out this poll, how do you think the situation in Libya will end? Gaddafi uh, will remain the leader, and Libya will remain a sovereign nation, or Gaddafi will either step down or be assassinated, and Libya will lose its sovereignty, uh, either neither, or not sure, so go in there and check that out. And uh, I kind of enjoyed watching that one video of that speech. I mean, man, that is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, Wolf Blitzer and that, they probably think that this is going to scare Americans so that we want to go over there and fight them. But it's like, no, you should not want to go fight them because they're fighting women and everybody um, because they just want to be... Uh, a free country and now you can say oh well they're a dictatorship they're not a free country they're not like us a democracy well you're living in a democracy it's just a different type of dictatorship so i've already went through all this but uh they are fighting for their uh national sovereignty and they know it and uh, i say good for them it says here Gaddafi can stay in libya if he quits says rebel chief so they want him to stand down in his own country and give up his own um uh, his own role as their leader, uh, which is completely ridiculous. Madar Muammar Gaddafi is welcome to live out his retirement inside Libya uh, as long as he gives up all power. So see, this is the international community telling us one of the last sovereign nations what to do. This is why they're fighting. Libya's rebel chief told Reuters on Sunday in the clearest concession that rebels uh, have so far offered. And uh, in their country, they probably refer to them as terrorists. And, um, you know, so that's how it's going to be. And the same thing is going to happen here in the United States, you know, where uh, people that are called patriots are going to be called terrorists. And uh, all these um, other people, they're going to be co-opted by uh, the international community and funded by them. Uh, basically, they're going to be called uh, uh, rebels or uh, protesters, uh, anti-government protesters. It says here, countdown to invasion, Libya's neighborhoods, prepare for NATO boots. It says here, uh, at 10 a.m. Tripoli time, on 6 11 uh, the Libyan Ministry of Health made available to its observer uh, its compilation entitled Current Statistics of Civilian Victims of NATO Bombardments on Libya. It says before releasing their data, which will be made public this afternoon, is confirmed by the findings of the Libyan Red Crescent Society and also the civil defense workers in the neighborhood bombed and then vetted by researchers at uh, Tripoli's Nassar University. It says here the neighborhoods in Libya are preparing for a ground invasion and to confront directly the invaders with a plan that one imagines would not be unfamiliar to General Giap of Vietnam or Chinese general uh, being a massive people's defense 
It has been organized with a house-by-house, street-by-street defense plan for every neighborhood and will include all available weaponry. The defenders are not military, although uh, many of the older ones had done one-year compulsory service following high school. Their ranks include every able-bodied woman and man ages 18 to 65, younger or older, will not be refused. And Russia, uh, France breaches Libyan arms ban. Russian foreign minister has blasted France for violating a UN arms embargo on Libya by air dropping weapons to revolutionary forces earlier this month. Then we have AFRICOM. Uh, this is straight from Air Force Times website. Air Force Navy still flying Libya missions. Said they were still flying hundreds of strikes missions over Libya despite the Obama administration's claim that American forces are playing only a limited role uh, in the NATO operation. And uh, uh, what is the um, kinetic military action? I think that's what he, the, the crap that he, uh, the crap term or phrase that he uses. Clinton, Gaddafi threats won't deter NATO mission. I don't think these are threats anymore. I think he's all, his, the threats are over with him. I think they're actually going to start taking action here. That's my feeling on it. So they're, this is more propaganda coming out of the West. Threats won't deter their mission. Well, no, they're taking action. I think they're done with that. Afghanistan bans more security firms. Afghan governments have banned the operation of five more private security companies in the war-ravaged country. And then we have this. UN report shreds U.S. claims of Afghanistan progress. You can go in there and check that out. Links will be posted. Uh, next up, we have 2011, waiting for it to come up. 2011 on pace to match the deadliest year in Afghanistan for U.S. troops. Then U.S. allies, uh, U.S. and allies cut plans for funding uh, Afghanistan's forces. They're probably done with that country now. McCain, I hope we can move forward with long-term U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. Next up, we have this. Afghans can attack diggers. Radical says, oh, he's a radical because he's a, he, he wants a sovereignty. So he said that uh, they are fair game and Muslims have an obligation to attack them. An Islamic radical said at a conference in Sydney yesterday. Quote, if our members exist in a country where an occupation has occurred, in their capacity as individuals, they will have an obligation to resist. Next up, we have despite Pakistani denials, U.S. keeps drone operations inside country. Then Petraeus ups airstrikes in Pakistan. U.S. drones used for the target assassinations in Pakistan's tribal areas have intensified under U.S. General David Petraeus. And uh, he just got sworn in as the uh, head of the CIA now, so it kind of makes sense. You know, CIA, drones, drones, CIA. Uh, CIA was trained in Somalia. Uh, Somali uh, ex-CIA agents uh, training Somalis and uh, uh, setting up s uh, certain apparatuses and, and groups and training in that. And then now they're having drone strikes in Somalia. I'll cover that. Six Syrians killed as 500,000 protests against Assad. And then we have tanks and troops deployed in uh, Syria. And uh, you can be rest assured if this 500,000 slaves showed up in America um, chanting for a different type of enslavement, a different system, um, like I said, you'd be rest assured that if they didn't have tanks here in the United States, they would have light armored vehicles and similar, uh, um, similar, um, you know, uh, vehicles and that, uh, or measures taken by the U.S. government as Syria is doing right now. So as U.S. uses HR human rights to weaken Iran and Syria, and he said uh, for imposing sanctions on Iran and Syria, reiterating that Washington uses human rights as a tool to exert pressure on independent countries, yeah, sovereign nations. UK joins US Israeli is uh, Iranophobia hype. Britain, uh, the US and the Zionist regime have joined hands in the malicious campaign to propagate Iranophobia in the Middle East region and around the world. Iran passes draft law requiring Palestinians to pay for their own home demolitions. Can you believe that? Greece arrests freedom uh, flotilla captain, so they arrested him. And look at this, Gaza-bound activists vowed to complete trek. I, what, without the captain, maybe they got a new one? I don't know. ICC, um, the criminal court will uh, toss Bahrain UK case, which is pretty crappy. Uh, German tanks serve Saudi crackdown, so German tanks are helping to crack down in Saudi Arabia. It says here, a U.S. envoy says Iraq critical to global energy needs, talking about oil. That's why you have a Chinese oil company over there now. U.S. military sees Iran behind rising troop deaths in Iraq, and they don't believe that. They think it's ridiculous. Uh, it says here, fresh protests break out in Egypt. Then U.S. extends uh, drone strikes to Somalia. So there you go, the first drone strike in Somalia. So like I said, that's the new theater now, right? And that's why you have what? Chinese Navy sends escort fleet to the Gulf of Aden. It's to fight pirates. <laughs> I haven't said it in a while, but if you believe that, go back to sleep. And for the good of all of us, don't wake up. A terror attack this weekend. FBI gearing up for possible 
Fourth of July uh, incident. So, um, you know, the government may have a false flag terrorist attack that scared the plebs into taking away more freedoms. Thank you.